Hey everybody, welcome back to Anthony's Horror More, and today I want to talk to you guys about my top 10 favorite summertime horror films. Yeah, yep, I went ahead and, uh, you know, I was just looking through my collection, it's like, you know what, it's summertime, you know, what, what movies have, have I been watching lately, and um, yeah, it's a lot of, you know, these sweaty, gross, you know, fucking nasty, uh, horror films <laughs> you know that um definitely like as soon as it started getting hot outside i was like man these are the ones i want to watch so i just figured i'd come on and uh share them with you guys so here we go at number 10 wrong turn yes with alicia cutbert great cast a lot of recognizable faces in this but obviously the true stars are the uh three deformed hillbilly killers <laughs> you know that are in this movie um yeah it's great you know you get some amazing uh practical effects in this some really cool kills some good blood and gore and all that stuff that just like you want obviously it's summertime they're out in the woods it's hot <laughs> you know um and it's just fun. I like, I like how, you know, each of these guys, each of these like killer redneck guys have their own like kind of signature weapons. Like the one guy has like a bow and arrow. The other guy likes to use his knives. They all kind of have this one guy has like, um, the barbed wire, you know, type shit. Um, that he, uh, one of the girls gets killed. She gets it like right through her mouth. I mean, it's just brutal. Great looking effects too like i think uh that whole effect for that where it's you literally see the fucking barbed wire like in her mouth and stuff when they're like dragging her you know <laughs> when they're dragging her corpse in or whatever it's just like wow that looks so real um but yeah lots of like i said lots of good stuff in this one if you haven't seen wrong turn highly highly recommend it fun movie all right next up we got the cabin in the woods and this is one of those movies that um you know if you don't know anything about it it is this is a really cool Lionsgate steel book <laughs> uh, but if you don't know anything about the film it's best to go in just kind of blind to it um but it's a lot of fun, you know, bunch of, uh, college kids go out to the woods, you know, they have a nice cabin that they're, uh, going into and there's a lake and, uh, you know, all your typical stuff that happens. And then, uh, these zombies awaken and start picking them off one by one. But if you've watched the movie, then you know, there's so much more to it than that. Uh, and I won't spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen it, but there's some awesome creature designs in this film that I love. It pays a lot of homage to other horror films. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is great in this. Bradley Whitford is awesome. Very funny. And it does a good job of balancing the comedy with the horror. And that's, uh, that's what I love. You know, it gets it just right. So, uh, the cabin in the woods, definitely check that one out if you haven't seen it, but just go into it blind. That's the best way to watch it. Jeepers Creepers 1. This is the double pack, but I'm just going to talk about the first film. Second one's a lot of fun as well, though. But you got Gina Phillips, you got Justin Long, you know, going on this little road trip back home, summertime. Um, and I just love their relationship. They really do feel like siblings. They feel like brother and sister. They bicker like brother and sisters do. They... Um, you know, they play the like, games and they have fun and they bitch at each other and <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, they talk about, you know, their parents and this and that. It, it feels like just like the short amount of time that you get with them before all the crazy stuff starts happening. You know, they really do build up their relationship well in that like opening like, you know, 10 minutes. But then as soon as you start to see that truck of that back windshield you know it's slowly coming at them and then it comes more and more into frame and everything and they start hearing honk 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 and shit and you know i love it when you know gina phillips is like let him go around you dairy jesus christ and he's like i'm trying to let him go around me you know it's just it you know it's, it feels so real and the the creature design 
is just amazing. I love it. Great practical effects once again. You know, I love the, the axe as the signature weapon there. A really cool design on that. And I just think this creature looks so cool. I mean, the face, the, uh, you know, the duster jacket, the hat, the wings, you know, when the jacket comes off, the fact that it can fly, um, you know, and, uh, you know, if you know, if you know Jeeber, you know, if you know the creature, you know, it, it eats, you know, different parts of people that it likes, you know, it's trying to smell, you know, what it likes on you. So it might like your eyes or your tongue or your heart or your kidneys, your liver, or whatever. It likes certain parts of different people. And it's very particular and it's awesome. I love the ending to this film. You know, I won't say anything, but uh, Jeepers Creepers, <laughs> you know, so well done. So definitely check out Jeepers Creepers if you haven't seen it. Love that movie. Coming in at seventh place, uh, we have Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Pretty much the quintessential summertime horror film. I mean, you got Tom Savini's amazing practical effects. My favorite kill of the whole franchise is the saw through the corner's neck, and then he twists his head around, you know, and you got all that blood and everything in there. It looks great. Um, the cast is awesome. Everybody, you know, is getting along, having a good time. You got Crispin Glover doing his little Crispin Glover dance. You know, you got the corkscrew kill. Uh, you got the, uh, guy getting his head smashed into the shower great kill uh i always love jason when he's wielding an axe i think that's so cool when he just hits that chick that's in the towel with the axe you know and i i just any kill where jason uses an axe i, I just think it looks badass so you know friday the 13th excellent movie um and definitely a perfect summertime watch i mean you can't go wrong with the final chapter but most of the Friday the 13th movies are great summertime watches. <laughs> but, you know, this is just one of my favorites. So, all right. So now we got sixth place. We got House of Wax. Nice Scream Factory release there. Um, yeah, phenomenal cast. Of course, you got Alicia Cutbert, Chad Michael Murray, Brian Van Holt, Paris Hilton, Jared Padalecki. Um, awesome cast. Uh, once again, I'm a big, you know, I love practical effects, you know, and stuff like that. And this, this film has plenty of them. I love the actual House of Wax itself uh, with all the wax sculptures and everything in there. Um, great kills in this, you know, the one person that gets their head decapitated, you know, with the two blades, uh, the Achilles tendon getting cut, you know, that was brutal. Um, the actual machine itself that turns you into, um, a wax sculpture while you're still alive, you know, you actually get to see the machine. I just think that looks so badass when it sh shows that person sitting in the chair, you know, the camera's just sitting there and it's, sl you know, it's slowly zooming in. You just see all these little nozzles spraying like that hot wax on the person and they're still alive. All this is going on. It's brutal. Uh, I think Alicia Cutbird is the final girl is excellent. Um, you know, when she gets her lips glued together, that's brutal. <laughs> brutal and sexy at the same time. What? <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, Paris Hilton, I think, is good in this, too, believe it or not. I think she actually does a good job. You know, she doesn't have a ton, ton to do, but I think playing, like, the best friend role, I think she does a good job, you know? Um and just the, uh, you know, the killer or killers, you know, are excellent in this. Uh, you know, I won't give away too much, but I think they uh, do a great job. So, you know, very, very menacing in different ways, which I really appreciate. So definitely check out House of Wax, the remake from 2005. If you haven't seen it, it is excellent. All right, in fifth place, we have The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake. Another remake. I do love my remakes, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not saying that this is better than the original. For me, it's more rewatchable than the original. That's just my personal taste. The original will always be like a masterpiece, revolutionary-type film. I'd never knock it. And the original feels more like a uh, found-footage movie, which I always appreciate. It feels very real. 
Um, uh, but this movie, I think, does a great job feeling, you know, like I said, su perfect summertime movie. It's hot, it's sticky, it's dirty, it's gross, like, and they do a good job of conveying that. Arlie Ermey is excellent in this as the uh, sheriff. I think he's great. He's got a lot of funny lines. You know, he, he's, he's perfect at being creepy, but funny at the same time. You know, when the guy is, uh, when he's talking to that, you know, kid in the van, you know, he's, he's like, oh, is this where the murder happened? You know, where the girl blew, blew her brains out or whatever. He's like, um, you know, because, you know, the way he's, you know, Arlie Ermey is like sitting there looking at it and he's like, well, it kind of looks like it happened here in the middle. This is where all the blood is. And he's like, you know, the kid's like, oh, yeah, it may have happened in the middle, you know, and, he, and Arlie Ermey's like, well, maybe you ought to get in the fucking middle then, <laughs> you know, and then he puts like the revolver in his mouth and all that shit. I mean, it's just so brutal. Um, Jessica Biel, I think, does a good job in this too, you know, very underrated. She, she's good in these kind of movies, you know, and stuff like, you know, she's, uh, she's good in these like horror movies, thrillers, stuff like that. I think she does a great job. Um, and she's super hot, of course, come on, I mean, the cowboy hat and all that shit, like, let's, let's go, you know, but Leatherface himself is a badass too. You know, when the guy in the wheelchair, he's got his cane, he starts hitting it on the ground. And then, you know, Leatherface just opens that, he slides that door open, chases that guy, cuts his fucking leg off. The blood hits those white uh, towels that are hanging out there and everything. Or the uh, the white, like, bed sheets that are out there. Yeah, it's like a white bed sheet. That blood just spatters all over it. Excellent, you know. And I just love, I mean, look how menacing he is. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so yeah, definitely check this one out if you haven't seen it. It's a great remake. All right, coming in at number four, we've got Joyride. Hey, trust you now. <laughs> bye bye, Black Sheep. You know, it's just, I love it. You know, once again, um, you got a great dynamic here with the two brothers. I think Steve Zahn and uh, Paul Walker, rest in peace, do a great job as brothers. And I think um, Lili Sabisky, I think she does a great job. Um, she's also in another movie called The Glass House, which I think is really good. People don't talk about that one too much. Um, but yeah, excellent movie. Very good, like, thriller, horror movie. You know, like, but it, it really does... Um, it really does like build up that suspense, you know, it takes its time. Um, and it, it you know, cause there's not really like a ton of death in this movie or anything like that. It just, but it really, it, there's so much tension and suspense when it happens. Like it does a great job of setting up the brothers and their relationship. And they're just kind of having fun talking shit like brothers do having a good time. And then, it starts to get into like, you know, they start fucking with this truck driver, you know, and, um, you know, t tell him to bring some pink champagne, <laughs> you know, and they're just fucking with this guy. Um, it it's so well done, you know, and they have, you know, they have him go butt ass naked into that restaurant, like, you know, uh, um, uh, God, there's just so many scenes when they're out in the middle of that cornfield, you know, that, that, that's a real tense scene right there, you know, and you just see him coming through the cornfield and he's got his dirty fucking oil covered hands and shit in there. And, you know, he snatches up that one character and, um, yeah, it's just so good. You know, the scene with the ice truck, you know, is like, you know, Fuller, you know, Steve Zahn's character is like, I got a gun, man, I got a fucking gun. And the the truck driver's like, and I've got a MasterCard, you know. <laughs> he gives him the MasterCard back. You know, Fuller's like, God, I've never felt like such a pussy in my entire life. <laughs> There's just so much awesome, funny dialogue that, you know, so they'll they'll have all these tense moments and then they'll break it break it up with these funny moments as well, you know? Um, so yeah, yeah, you definitely got to check out Joyride if you haven't seen it. Once again, I'm not sure. I, it feels like a summertime movie to me, so I, I put it as a summer watch. Um, but either way, if you haven't seen Joyride, definitely check it out. It's great. Um, all right. Let's see. And of course, there's the famous, you know... You know, Black Sheep, you really ought to get that fixed. Get what fixed? 
your tail light. <laughs> you know, of course you got that scene. It's like the most iconic thing in the whole movie, but it's great. That whole movie is awesome. All right, coming in at third place, we got I Know What You Did Last Summer. And I know a lot, what a lot of you guys are thinking, like, oh my God, you put that over all those classic whatever movies. I'm like, you know, man, but it's the perfect 4th of July watch. It truly is just an excellent summertime film. It is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, for me, because I grew up like watching a lot of 90s slasher movies, 90s horror movies, as, as well as, you know, a lot of classics and stuff. A lot of stuff from like the 80s and stuff too. But I don't know. The 90s just will always have a special place in my heart because those are the ones that I went to go see in like theaters and stuff like that. And, you know, just more memorable to me from, you know, when I was a kid and stuff. So yeah, I love I Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, you know, I think Ryan Fil Felipe and Sarah Michelle Gellar are the two best, you know, actors in this film. You know, I think Freddie Prince Jr. is just okay. And, um, Jennifer Love Huge Tits is fine. I think she's serviceable. You know, I think she's, you know, uh, she's good in this, but she's a little over the top at times, especially in that third act gets a little too much. You know, it's like, I get it. You're a scream queen, you know, and stuff like that, but you can tone it down a little bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think I love Ryan Felipe in this movie because he's the biggest asshole in the entire world and he's so good at it. <laughs> he's so good at being a dickhead, you know? I mean, when he's just delivering that line, you know, and Ray's like, I got a letter. And he's like, oh, you got a letter? I got run over. She got her hair cut off. Jules, Julie got a body in the trunk and you get a letter that's balanced. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's such a good delivery, you know? Um, and then when, even when they're sitting in the bedroom and they're trying to figure out, you know, who it could be and stuff like that. Freddie Prince Jr. Once again, is like, uh, it didn't look like that guy. And you know, Ryan Felipe's character is like, we well, yeah, had no shit genius. He, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't have blood all over his face or whatever. <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, of course it wouldn't look like him, you know? Um, yeah, it's just so good. He's just always talking shit in the movie and I think it's hilarious. Um, but, um, yeah, I think the killer is really cool. You know, you got the, you know, the, the like fisherman, like with the slicker on, you know, with the hook and all that going around killing people. Um, Leonard from Big Bang Theory, you know, is in this. And, uh, you know, he's got a cool kill, you know, where the hook just goes right up, like, through his jaw. And then he comes down, he drags him across that big sheet of ice, and then the blood's all over the ice. I thought that was a really cool kill. Um, you know, the, the cop that gets, like, the hook through him, and then he kind of gets gutted or whatever, you know. You see the blood come out of his mouth. I mean, there's some cool kills. They could have been more graphic, but... It was the 90s, so it was a little weird back then. They weren't, like, overly graphic with kills and stuff like that. Uh, some movies they did, but others, maybe because they were, you know, worried. I don't know. It was weird. It was the 90s. You never knew what you're, you were going to get. But I think there's definitely some good kills and stuff in there. I just think it's a fun movie. Um, you know, I like the music a lot. Um, you know, that, like, hush, hush, told you not to come on my hush. Uh, da, 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 da. like you know there's just a lot of cool music and stuff um once again i like you know like all that stuff and uh i think it's really well shot i like the way it's directed i like um you know it, i mean you just get a lot of cool stuff in this movie i like that's like on the water you got a lot of cool water shots and stuff too it's just uh it's great like i said sarah michelle geller is excellent too i think her and ryan felipe just should have been the main characters because they're just the best actors in this movie um but yeah i know what you did last summer i look forward to i still know what you did last summer uh getting its 4k this year so that'll be cool too all right coming in at number two we have jaws <laughs> of course we got jaws in here um you know, Love Jaws, obviously another, like, quintessential, you know, like, go-to summertime horror film. And for good reason. It's excellent. I mean, it's excellent in every way. It's a great um, horror film, you know. Uh, it's a great adventure movie, too. And it definitely brings a lot of, 
you know, you got great gore and blood and stuff in this, but most of it is really about just the characters and, you know, their, their chemistry with each other and the camaraderie and stuff like that. That's what's great about Jaws. But when it gets into the horror aspect of it, it's very intense too. And of course, you'll never forget the scene where it's throwing the chum over the water and Jaws pops up and it doesn't even really like focus on it that's what makes it so freaky because you just don't it just you know he's just throwing chum in the water and you're like okay whatever and then all of a sudden you just see jaws pop out and you know <laughs> like it just i mean that that will last with you forever that scene you know um because it's just so out of nowhere but you know um you know he's got the blackest eyes a doll's eyes i mean there's just so many iconic lines scenes you know jaws it's fantastic perfect summertime watch um definitely go watch it you can still get the steel book too which i think is pretty cool you can still find this for a lot of times um at like target and stuff so yeah go ahead and get that too but yeah jaws excellent and number one for me is scream you know it takes place in school but then obviously you know they uh school's out for the summer you know and that you know it's a summertime movie and everything and um yeah it's just excellent i love scream i mean i've talked about this film like you know ad nauseum <laughs> you know i love um but you know i don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen scream but um you know you know the the killer or killers in the film you know are excellent uh and you know just have some of my favorite lines you know why'd you have to hit me with the phone dick you know and your mother was a slut bag whore flash of shit all over town like she was sharon stone or something you know just you know so many great lines uh, i think nev campbell's awesome in it Drew Barrymore, the opening scene to Scream is one of my favorite openings to any movie ever. Um, you know, I think it's great. Uh, you know, it's it just it's a perfect opening to a film, just the way it builds up the tension. Uh, you know, just I love the games that they play. You know, who was the killer in Friday the Thirteenth? You know, da, 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 you know, you know when they're talking about. Um, you know, Freddy Krueger and stuff, you know, and it's like, oh, is that the guy that has knives for fingers, you know, and stuff. I just, all that dialogue at the beginning is so well done. And then, um, yeah, it's great. And then, you know, you get in there, and, you know, you get into it, you get to meet all the other, you know, the other characters and stuff in the film, of course. And, you know, Matthew Lillard, Skeet Ulrich, uh, you know, Nev Campbell, um, Jamie Kennedy, you know, just, uh, everybody they're all excellent i mean even henry winkler is the principal is great i mean just the whole cast is phenomenal courtney cox um david arquette um yeah it's just a a great cast but um but yeah yeah so definitely scream my number one i, I literally watch this you know multiple times a year it's just uh it's just one of those go-to movies for me. You know, it's just always entertaining. So, yep, Scream's my number one. And, uh, yeah, that'll do it, guys. That's my top ten. I just wanted to get on here and show that, uh, show all those to you guys. And um, I hope everybody's having a great summer so far. I hope everyone had a fun 4th of July. I actually watched, I know what you did last summer, and Scream back-to-back -back on the 4th of July, so that was a lot of fun um saw some cool fireworks which is always nice and uh yeah it's been good been a pretty solid summer so far uh, i've got some fun stuff coming up i know um this saturday at god i'm not sure if we settled on a time yet this saturday i, I want to say probably around 8 or 9 p.m eastern you know we're going to be doing our uh top five horror or top five anthology stories um stream coming up over on pops movie dungeons channel you know i'll uh, leave a link in the description you know when you know um uh, when that's you know officially posted up and everything but yeah it should be it will definitely be this saturday uh 
like I said, 8 or 9 p.m., somewhere around there is usually when we do it. So that would be a lot of fun. I, you know, I love horror anthologies, and we're just doing stories from, like, our top five stories from those anthologies. Um, so it doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not the entire movie. It's just the stories in them, you know, top five. So that makes it a lot more difficult. But I really look forward to uh, that stream. And then July 11th, I'm going to be doing a, um, over on Fox Nervig's channel, go subscribe to him. We're going to be talking about the entire Insidious franchise. We're going to rank all the movies. We're going to talk about the brand new one that just came out. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So that'll be uh, July 11th um, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So I look forward to that. And um, July 18th over on Bob's Blu-rays channel, uh, I'm going to be doing a slipcover tournament over there. So that will be a lot of fun. I look forward to that. It's my first time ever being in one of those tournaments. So that, that should be cool. Um, and that will be at 8.30 Eastern, July 18th. Um, so... Yeah, 8 30 p.m. Eastern, July 18th. So, yeah, so that's what I got coming up, guys, just in case you were interested. <laughs> you know, I just thought I'd let you know before I forget to mention this stuff. So, yeah, I look forward to all that. And um, please, in the comments down below, let me know what some of your guys' favorite summertime horror films are. I, I, I could have named off easily, like, probably like 50 more of these, but I just wanted to keep it to the ones that are really close you know, to my heart and stuff, the ones that I go to a lot and, um, rewatch a lot. So yeah, but let me know down in the comments below. What are some of your favorites? Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it. And, um, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. Happy summer.